ताजिकिस्तान ताजिकिस्तान इज ए कंट्री दैट काइंड ऑफ इट फॉल्स इन पामीर प्लेटो पामीर इज ए प्लेटो तिब्बतियत इज ए प्लेटो लाइक छोटा नागपुर इज ए प्लेटो इन इंडिया सो पामीर प्लेटो पामीर प्लेटो इफ देर आर थ्री पार्ट ऑफ हिमालय ईस्टर्न पार्ट वेस्टर्न पार्ट एंड नॉर्दर्न पार्ट दे मीट एट द काराकोरम रेंज तो काराकोरम रेंज दैट फॉल्स इन जम्मू कश्मीर कश्मीर रीजन एंड देर ऑल थ्री हिमालय दे मीट फ्रॉम देर द नॉर्दर्न हिमालय और एक्सटेंडेड हिमालय दैट स्टार्ट ओके सो द पामीर प्लेटो इफ इफ दिस इज काराकोरम रेंज and this is western himalaya this is eastern himalaya and this is northern himalaya then at this angle from the the meeting point if you go north that is extended himalaya then the west side if this is east side then west side this full region is pamir plateau famous plateau so pamir plateau and then northern himalaya would go like this and slowly it will turn eastward and it will go to mongolia and the main river east to northern himalaya that falls under indian subcontinent is tarim river so hotan river kasim river kasi river all they meet in the tarim river so tarim river all also called sita river it is indian subcontinent it is called sita river so sita river they finally becomes go meet as a a uh, kind of uh, lopnur lopnur is the lake whereas if this is northern himalaya then east side is the tarim river west side there is a country called tajikistan tajikistan touches afghanistan okay probably the amu river amu darya makes the boundary more or less between afghanistan and tajikistan whereas so full tajikistan comes in amu basin amu dari darya amu river basin so amu river goes and it meets aral sea now these are the stories only because amu river never meets aral sea there is a high profile channel they have made or canal from the amu river and it goes till asgabad that is in turkmenistan so full irrigation is happening so there is no amu river beyond some beyond some point and so there is amu river that flows in pamir plateau and there is another river that is called sir river so the full tajikistan comes in the catchment of come of amu basin i am saying basin because it meets aral sea theoretically and there is another river called sir river so that flows so full full kyrgyzstan so full kyrgyzstan falls under the catchment of sir basin so sir also meets aral sea or our story is only aral sea is dried up so i believe 68 or 70 or 90000 square kilometer area of saline sea aral sea is no more anyway now the kind of uh, if ganga ganga is a river in india and ganga is called as river of paddy cultivation the paddy the quality of paddy that is cultivated quality and quantity you know now there is no cultivation because cylinder 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 so indian national congress the bluff master i call this party as bluff master they bluff they keep on bluffing britishers and they keep on bluffing the people of india they bluff everyone so since 1985 it is called party of bluff master so river ganga is a kind of a river which which is like you can say that it's a river of pulp paddy cultivation high highest quality paddy okay but these bluff master they completely change the political scenario of the country agricultural scenario of the country for sake of sucking blood means money from the people means petroleum based agriculture and now they are not talking about the agriculture at all everyone's account they will put 8000 rupees 9000 rupees per month no need to work out just vote to them and 8000 9000 rupees per month anywhere way you will get in your account and then lpc cylinder in 500 rupees they will give 
so these they have never given in 70 years but suddenly they will start giving so these are the story of bluff master so river ganga is called a river of paddy means this is the highest possible cultivation you got for paddy along the river ganga and river around it but that is in kind of uh, effect or you can say in the magnetic field of river ganga only or any other river or it is being a jamuna or it is a, like uh, uh, godavari river uh, that is also good, uh, known as for rice cultivation or any narmada or tapti river or swarnarekha river so but the main river which is the river of paddy is river ganga like that the main river which kind of produces like if you see the water pump in agricultural field it throws water in a bulk so main river which kind of produces the dry fruit is river is sir river sir river is the center of dry fruit so sir river the full uh, kyrgyzstan it falls in sir river catchment area but the kind of uh, uh, part of tajikistan one province is called sugad province sugad 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 province of the tajikistan is fully full tajikistan is in amudarya catchment so the sir darya and then it's a friend uh, uh, river or brother river uh, amudarya so both are river of dry fruit so country that comes in effect of amudarya and sir darya are afghanistan tajikistan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan turkmenistan and kazakhstan so these are called central asian country afghanistan also though afghanistan falls in indian subcontinent and this country they, they do not fall in in indian subcontinent rather they fall in russian subcontinent this tajikistan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan turkmenistan and kazakhstan they fall in the same subcontinent where afghanistan falls in indian subcontinent but all are amudarya and sir darya country so the dry fruit production in these countries are high especially tajikistan afghanistan and and kyrgyzstan so there the dry fruit cultivation is very high. so if we see the tajikistan then it comes i think it is 22nd exporter or producer of dry fruit across the world and it is very small country it is around 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 lakh a square kilometer so 10 lakh is 1 million now you can it will come as 120 120000 okay so we have prepared data so uh, tajikistan is one point uh, kind of uh, 143000 square kilometer is the area that is tajikistan and tajikistan total population is around 10 million around 48 people they stay in one square kilometer so it's a pretty small country but still the it is 22nd exporter of the dry fruit that is a big thing looking at its size so sugad province in tajikistan that is in sir full tajikistan is amudarya catchment where is sugad province that is north west province that falls in sir darya catchment so that gary area is in uh, tajikistan but falls in kind of sir darya catchment so it is like uh, it has both effect so very powerful dry fruit production in the sugad province of tajikistan like groundnut groundnut walnut okay apricot grapes apple peaches okay so 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 many pomegranate and then you can say cherry i am not remembering everything but this much much more than that is dry fruits are being cultivated in sugad province mainly all over tajikistan mainly in sugad province of the tajikistan okay if you see the ground nut it is yellow color white color and it will be this big okay probably kind of uh, uh, three inches or something like that it is very big 
means all the dry fruit that is cultivated in Tajikistan is of high po highest cost because the seeds are here, right? Means that is the so Central Asia is called countries of dry fruits. So Sir Darya is center of dry fruit and uh, Sugat province is the highest cultivation of the dry fruit. So uh, in the in the Tajikistan. So as we talk, so many things that is kind of uh, is cultivated in Tajikistan. Let's see what is the rate at which they export the dry fruit. Okay, so they in 2022, if we see the Tajikistan around 25.4 million dollar, they exported dry fruit. If we see how much they exported to United States, then to United States they exported the dry fruit at the rate of 363 dollar per ton. Ton is 1000 kilogram. 363 dollar per ton. Tajikistan is this side of the earth and United States is other outside of the earth. Tajikistan is a landlocked country where the United States has Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean both. So from Tajikistan taking it to kind of United States, then you have to take the dry fruit to the Caspian Sea. From Caspian Sea, then it will go to United States. It's a big pain, but still United States states it receives the dry fruit from the Tajikistan at the rate of 363 dollar per ton. If I calculate it is in rupees, then it will come around 28, 29 rupees per kg. 28, 20, 29 rupees per kg. If it is 29 rupees per kg, it is selling to United States. If dry fruits come to India from Tajikistan, certainly it would not be more than 15 rupees per kg, half or 20 rupees per kg. Because of the pain in from the land, it will take it to Caspian Sea far, and then from Caspian Sea, then so many countries it will pass through, then it will go to United States. Now, if you see the Tajikistan where it stays, then Tajikistan south is Badkhashan river region of Afghanistan. So Afghanistan Badkhashan river is merely 10, 20 kilometer wide. That's it. What is 20 kilometers? So from 20 kilometer down. Then it comes to Gilgit Baltistan region of India, theoretically. So, if Gilgit Baltistan region is with India, then distance between India and Tajikistan is 20 km. If it is 20 km, it is, it is as good as 0 km. So, Tajikistan is as good as neighboring country of India. Just think that 20 rupees per kg, highest possible quality of dry fruit, if it comes to India, then what will happen to the Indian market? Means what will happen to the Indian people? People are buying dry fruit at the cost of 2000 rupees per kg also. That costly. And 20 rupees, 2000 rupees per kg. Means government is. What I should say? What I should say? 20 rupees per kg someone will keep in your home. Means in Indian market they will export at 20 rupees per kg. Okay, now in shops it will come maximum as 50 rupees, 60 rupees per kg dry fruits. But it is in shops it is up to 2000 rupees per kg dry fruit. And that is from some other countries they export in dollar. So first they get the dollar and they buy from so many far distance countries dry fruits from Saudi Arabia and here and there. From if they buy from Afghanistan also. Then from Afghanistan it comes to Chabahar port and then Bombay port or, or Ahmedabad and then goes inside India. It becomes costly there. Well. But if it comes from Tajikistan directly to Gilgit but to the India, if India, Gilgit Baltistan belongs to India, then if I see the dollar, dollar rupee conversion, then it will come 20 rupees per kg. But if they buy directly in rupee, if rupee is powerful, then it is cheaper even. Just think, it is with it is the dry fruit in India will be cheaper to rice and wheat. Or if dry fruit in India are being cultivated, India is not known for dry fruit. So the quality of the Indian dry fruits are no way at par with the Tajikistan dry. Fruit. Now think the apricot. So if I see the price of the each dry fruit, okay, 
Now groundnut. Groundnut they exported to USA at 24 24 cent per kilogram. 24 cent per kilogram. Okay, dollar 20 dollar uh, 0.24 that will come come as 24 cent. So that will come around same as 18 19 rupees per kg. So that is groundnut. So groundnut Tajikistan variety, not Indian variety. Tajikistan variety groundnut is at 20 rupees, 25 rupees per kg to United States. In India, the groundnut is 200 rupees per kg. Groundnut bit is shell, okay, full. It is sold in the market at 80 rupees per kg. So groundnut seed that will come as 200 rupees per kg in India. From there, it is 20 rupees per kg, highest possible quality. Now, if we see figs, if we see walnut, then it is around 3.788 dollar that is exported to United States per kg. So it will come as around uh, 270 to 80 rupees per kg. Whereas in Indian market, it is more than 1000 rupees per kg. And that too, what variety God knows. Now, if we see apricot, okay, then apricot is kind of two dollar per kg. They sell sold it to United States. That it comes around 150, 160 rupees per kg. Whereas apricot is here around 400 rupees per kg. That to which variety? God knows. Fig they sold around 7.7 dollar .7 per kg. That dry fig. Whereas that will come as around 600 rupees per kg. Whereas in India, the fig is more than 1200 rupees per kg. That is what quality you don't know. Now you tell me that this, uh, this country is going away. No concentration on food. The rice cultivation along the Ganga, uh, Ganga kind of catchment area, the, uh, the uh, states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal, they come in Ganga Basin, okay. So, those places, now this Indian National Congress, they are behind cylinder, 500 rupees cylinder and 8000 rupees per month in your account, rather than kind of encouraging them to cultivate high quality paddy so that India could export to the world. Power of the rupee would grow like anything, then you can buy dry fruit from Tajikistan from the rupee only because they can buy the food grains or paddy from you and in that sense you have the kind of high trade area. If trade is high, your employment is high. If trade is high, your population will start going down, population going down because people are meeting lot of people anyway. Then what is the need of creating lot of people here only? So trade would go, trade would increase, trade would increase population would go down, employment would increase and power of the rupee would also increase. Now, rather than talking about the trade and opening the boundary for the people going here and there, they have created the boundary. Okay, people must live in the boundary because India is a country. If India is a country, then there should be a boundary. Like India is the country in the, in the kind of government of Indian National Congress first time. So, India was carved out from somewhere first time. India was not a country before, existed before. Okay, in India itself there were many sub countries earlier and no one stopped people going here and there. Before 1947, people in Jammu Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan or anywhere, they, can, they could go to Tajikistan. Okay, it is 20 kilometers only, right, that Badkhashan narrow region of Afghanistan that falls there. 20 kilometers going, what a big deal. So, People, they used to go to kind of uh, the capital of uh, uh, Tajikistan is Dushanbe. And the Somoni, I believe, the Somoni is the currency. And that is seven, one Somoni, Somoni is around eight rupees. So that is powerful, eight times powerful to the Indian rupee. See the power, see the countryside and they cultivate uh, dry fruit, not the normal paddy, the food grain, but power of their currency because of their export. India is the main exporter of paddy always in the history. People do not have two time food. See the condition of India now. Five times population growth and people do not have any food. 
people do not have any uh, employment nothing population is uh, i am saying it is grown to any level all life is no agriculture nothing full agriculture is petroleum based how many liter of diesel you will buy you will go and keep buying diesel to run your kind of uh, to operate your motor or feeder in the agriculture field how many how much it's 100 rupees liter so rice is 50 60 rupees per kg no one can survive like this people do not have food rather than encouraging to have better agriculture that would be based on the traditional way now they are behind lpg 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 totally irrelevant their only eye is how to loot people make you dependent upon something that you don't have petroleum product india is not known no, for for kind of cultivation of petrol <laughs> so india is not a country which produces petrol so petrol comes from saudi arabia and those places that is in completely control of government so if you are dependent upon petrol completely as far as agriculture is concerned as far as medical system is concerned as far as fuel is concerned as far as any part of the life petroleum jelly comes right petroleum jelly then in winter you can put on the skin rather than you can put a kind of uh, uh, butter right milk butter comes with that comes from the milk directly and uh, that you can put rather than putting putting uh, it's called nenu in bihar so that rather than putting the nenu on your hand then you place petroleum jelly right or the kind of other jaitun oil and those things that olive oil those things you can put means be dependent on foreign country that is the idea okay the olive oil olive oil if you put then your skin will become smooth petroleum jelly then then you buy allopathic medicine then you buy lpg cylinder and then with the diesel you do the agriculture then everything is foreign based if you are dependent upon the foreign based technology then now you are completely dependent upon the government if you are completely dependent of the government now they will import in one rupee and they will put price as 10 rupees 20 rupees 100 rupees 1000 rupees that you have to purchase and that is the reason india is the penniless country india is a country that is suffering from hunger not from the unemployment unemployment is the history now it is suffering from the hunger okay in that sense they are now they are doing business in dollar now just think that if rupee is powerful then people would not only they will eat food grain they will have high quality uh, uh, dry fruits from tajikistan okay apricot walnut uh, kismis raisin grimis, uh, grapes groundnut high quality at so less price okay but that is not possible because india is a country which has closed its boundary for all its neighbors okay boundary is only open for switzerland germany france england canada united states south africa australia so go those places and take airplane okay make a passport and visa and go to those places and whatever you have earned throw that on pakistan is a bad country afghanistan is a bad country tajikistan is a bad country china is a bad country uh, and then bangladesh is a bad country bhutan is a bad country burma is a bad country sri lanka is a bad country why to go this country no need to do any trade if you want to do trade then go do the trade with germany what trade will happen nothing everything completely settled there is no trade only job people have to increase the population and to increase the the kind of hungerness okay anyway it is your voting right now go and give the vote